The first term at drama school challenged the trainee actors in ways they never imagined. As the pressures increased, they've had to face intense personal scrutiny. You're useless. Do you understand that? Do you understand what I'm saying? There have been tensions within the group. You really pissed me off. Eight years is too much. I wanted to kill you. She's got strong opinions. That doesn't make everybody else stupid. And as the second term begins, they're about to get a strong dose of reality. <laughs> the acting students have come back to drama school after the holidays with new energy. First day back from holiday, everyone was like, hey, we're back, let's get into it. And straight away, everyone hit the ground running. Slowly. <laughs> Every day I really look forward to it because I just don't know what's going to happen. Everyone's just letting loose a lot more. They're not so precious about who they are. I feel that everyone's a little bit more focused than, they were, than we were last year. I'm going to be healthy this year. Keep it up, yeah. And um, when other people are feeling down, our iron levels are going to be up and we're going to feel tops. And there's a buzz in the air as movie star Sam Neill pays a visit. I want these actors to get jobs. And um, so the more practitioners that we can get in here, the more theatre directors, film directors, the more people who uh, will be making choices about um, choosing actors to have opportunities in the future, the better. God, I'm so excited. He's just um, amazing. He's just somebody who's just done it. I don't really know much about him. There's this sort of hunger inside of me to like, wham bam, like impress him or something, but I'm not gonna. You know, this is a guy who's really, really done well for himself. And so, yeah, it's very, very privileged. Ryan's excited about meeting a real star. Really quite nervous right now. <sighs> <laughs> Welcome to Tafai. Welcome to Toy Fakati. Yeah, feel very privileged that you'd, that you'd come and join us this morning. And think, well, <laughs> if Sam Neill can do it, we can do it, sure. <laughs> Now, and, and it acts as somewhat, you know, a bit of a, a rebuttal and debate, you know, it's like, um, uh, you're wasting your time being an actor in New Zealand. Huh, Sam Neill. <laughs> you're just going to end up on the Street. Sam Neill. <laughs> I'm just back from Melbourne. I was making a film with Susan Sarandon. We were in bed a lot of the time. <laughs> And you know, there are worse things in life than to be in bed with Susan Sarandon. <laughs> At my time of my career, it's more... If you're in, doing bed scenes, you're more likely to be reading a book than... Um, <laughs> than the other thing. And, um, and I hear the call of the pyjama at night now, you know. <laughs> Come to bed. <laughs> Read a book. You know. What a nice guy, eh? What a... Good guy. It's a big inspiration, eh? It's just kind of, it reconfirms that, eh? It's good. He's just so, so shy and so, it's interesting, eh? I never believed that, that a film actor could be like that. But the excitement turns to nerves as the students brace themselves for their first assessments. From day one, they've been closely scrutinised. They're about to find out if they've measured up to the promise they oh. showed in the auditions. A wee bit intimidated by what they're going to say. We've been hearing sort of like horror stories about people running out of them crying and the students have heard about the assessments. The assessments, scary, no, 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 no. And they love making it much more scary than it is. It's just a bunch of people talking with you and having the honesty to say, well, this is what I see. How can we advance your work? So I guess it is scary, you know, because it's very scary uh, being told the truth. Got to make a start with all that. The tutors took a gamble on Holly. Despite seeing her natural talent, they weren't sure how she would adapt to the training. You need to, you need to wake up to the realities of what the game that you're involved in is. Stop it being a pipe dream, make it a, start making it a reality because it, it is a reality. I thought about it a lot over the holidays and I came back here knowing that this is definitely what I want. For sure. No. And what did you do this morning? Oh, I slept in. So don't tell me you came back here knowing if what you want and then sleep in. Doing is what makes it what you want. It's through commitment. And you've got a natural flair. So your job is to mine that and expand that natural flair. Don't sit back and rely on it. Because then you're not learning anything and letting your 
lack of self-esteem allow you to be a lazy pig? I still find that I'll go back to what's easy the next time around or what yeah. just got me under the radar. Right, time. yeah, yeah, well that's a great phrase for it, what just got me under the radar. Mm. And that's when I see you in the plaza eating a pack of rations <laughs> yeah. and a crunchy bar. I'm like, right, there's somebody who's just managed to go under the radar. I'll quickly go and reward myself for my strategic failure by having some <laughs> shit food, you know. I've developed this wee um, paranoia about developing type 2 diabetes because of my crap junk food diet. So I, I, I haven't had any candy floss all week. It's been terrible. <laughs> but what Tom needs from you in movement and training, you, you can't feed that with that crap food. I'm so relieved I didn't cry. Yeah! <laughs> I really hope that she is able to do good work because I think she's got the potential and the capacity and the charisma to really do something exciting. Ryan's never had a problem with motivation, but his need to plan everything in advance is getting in the way of his work. What is it about me you can't stand? Who I am or what I am? Don't work so hard. That's my only message to Ryan. Just don't work so hard. He's just so uptight about everything. For his sake, if he can learn to love the muck, mucky stuff, then I think it'll be great. When I got home from school, it's tea. I've actually I actually write tea in my diary. <laughs> I know. Freak out. I, I do try to, to take risks. I know, but you know, you go, I do take risks. I do. I've taken risks on, uh, you know, February the 27th I, at 4.30 p.m. I took a risk. It's like, <sighs> chill out. Mm. Slow down. You know, you worry so much. You worry so much. It's like, it's great. Oh. But in class, Ryan's still not lightening up. Sure, I, I don't think I'm going to do that. I mean, I don't do it direct, though, so we do exactly what we're told. No, 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 you don't do what you're told. No, that makes me out to be some kind of man of despot. No, no, but that's the way you do it in the industry. You'd but always do exactly what they say. Um, but, um, <laughs> oh, no, I just keep that. I'm waiting for the moment where you go, I can't be bothered trying this hard anymore. Why don't I just like duh, relinquish all this damn effort that I'm doing to be Ryan Richards. And that's when the real Ryan Richards will come out. In an assessment with the director of the school, Ryan realizes he needs to change the way he acts. You play your objective so hard. You've got it like this. Then how can someone affect you? It's like you've got to leave room to absorb the rest of the world. Sorry. You know, your eagerness can send you skating over the top. And see, this is a more interesting person. I look at you now and I go, yeah, you're a much more delicate person, eh, than you like to present yourself as. Yeah? Mm. Yeah, I guess it's true. I guess I've kind of forgotten about that I love, I love this work. And so I just don't try so hard, I just, just enjoy it more. As the evaluations go on, it's clear that all the students have to face some tough realities. When I wrote my feedback to you, I was like, well, maybe you've chosen the wrong course. Like, oh my God, does that mean that I shouldn't be here? Does that mean that I don't have, it, have what it takes? Colleen, you need to really think about whether you really want to be here, because I'm not convinced that you really want to be an actor. It's a nerve-wracking time at drama school as the students face their first assessments. I breathe slowly. A whole bunch, like... Acting runs in Sophie's family. Personally, I think I'm blessed because I've sort of got that inside eye to that industry, if you will. But Tom McCrory thinks this may be a mixed blessing. Really strong. In a way, your familiarity, your closeness to people like us, which you've grown up around, is a tricky thing mm. because it actually makes you very distant. I wonder how we can get to that freshness where it's really about you encountering this for the very first time. Well, that's a problem because I am. Yeah, but my job is not to relate to you as your friend, it's to relate to you as your teacher. Mm. Do you understand what I mean? Why I'm drawing attention to that? Yeah. Yeah. It's easier said than done, but you have to have the mentality of this is about my work. 
or this is going to help my work and they're saying this to help me and they're not just saying it to be horrible because why would they? I'm not going to discuss this! Ivania's always prepared to take risks in her work and seems to be impressing the tutors. Ivania just goes out there and, um, and, and is willing to be in the freezing cold and to be in a really dangerous place. Um, that's maybe um, good for her talent, but I don't know what that does for her relationship with the whole group. It's a little bit scary because, f for me, because it's like no one else is making those kind of offers at the moment. I have fun with her, but I just don't quite know where I'm going with her. She operates on like a different level to a lot of people. Oh, oh. And um, the landlord, he's letting me do anything I like. So I can paint golden insects if I want, anywhere. Seriously, I asked him. And then I was looking at this and I thought, I was getting really crazy and I thought, I'm going to make this a spaceship. And, and I was thinking I'd put a photo of my family here, like the looking out of the portal. <laughs> I like spacing out. <laughs> I like not being realistic. I know you live on your own. Mm. And I'll be really out there with you and say I don't think it's a good choice for no. you. I think you need to be in a flat with people who drive you nutty because they play music too late at night. Mm. I think you need to be in an environment where... Great. <laughs> where you oh. know them well enough to be able to come out and say, would you guys turn that bloody stereo down? It's unsettling the fact that I have to move out of my place and I need to go and live with some people who play loud music all the time. Mm. Diarrhea sounds like Maria takes long just grab your game boy and make sure you enjoy your dumb but you gotta hate it when you get splashed back from the water in the toilet and he came to Troy Ficardi saying yes I want my work to be deeper I know that I'm a bit the kind of the funny guy and um, and I can, you know, walk into any situation and make people laugh, but I want my work to, um, to be deeper and I can move people as well as make them laugh. Um, and so we say, yeah, okay, Byron, here are some ways to make your work more profound. And Byron goes, oh, don't mean, maybe go there. Come on, let's just get out of here. We can at least breathe. Byron knows what he wants to achieve as an actor, but first he's got to get over his prejudices. It's easy for you. I just I feel a bit funny um, when I'm playing a gay character or or anything like that, or being close to a guy in an intimate way. And I know that's a huge flaw, and that's something that I need to get away from as well. And it's just from being a bit scared of going too deep. What would happen if you went too deep? I don't know. That's the thing, because oh, I've never been there. Yeah, it's nice to see you struggling to open your mind to worlds that you've not been part of your upbringing. Yeah, I'm, and I'm willing to give it a go as well. Very good for you. Very well. Working on it and trying my best to succeed in that floor. Right. Colleen has been doing some serious thinking about why she's at drama school. Yeah, it's a tricky question. I've been I've been struggling to keep to keep a perspective on it. Like I, I get into a place of difficulty. Yeah, I'm struggling with it. Now her hopes for the future are hanging in the balance. I mean, I've been there with you. You choose to focus on the difficulty a hell of a lot of the time. I said to Colleen, do you really want to be here? Do you really want to be an actor? I don't quite believe you. So that Colleen could find out for herself whether or not that was true. And I think she's still thinking about it. At drama school, students are forced to work closely with each other. You give so much energy. Oh, no, shut up. There are definitely people that I've gone, wow. I said, you're just great to work with. Sophie's so wonderful to work with. Natano is so generous. He's such a generous actor to work with. Matt's got just kind of good energy about him, a real likeable energy. I'd have to say I've been really impressed with Ryan lately. <laughs> Ryan and Stephen are getting a real buzz from doing an improv scene about two climbers. Don't touch it. Hey, don't look at her. Eh? She's a pretty, oh, other, pretty other Jesus. Other I can remember two things. I can remember the, the stack of mats and stuff, but I can also remember the mountain. I was in the zone and I believed that I was, wasn't a peak. 
<laughs> my whole body started tingling and I felt like a bit quite numb all over. Like, I don't know what it was, but. Oh, like, I got a sense of character and I got a sense of more relationship with Stephen. The hell we do? We're gonna have to go. We can't. You're gonna have to just go. Look, I'm not, I'm I'm not, not pissing I'm not, around. I'm not leaving you. I can't leave you. I'll think some sense for a second. I'm going to die. I've got to go back. I'm not. I'm not. Just go! Oh, I'll tell. Oh, just go. Take care. That was unmatchful, you know. It was something about when you know when when you really feel something and when you're acting, it makes it feels like okay, I've actually done a proper job and I can feel good about that. The tutors use the assessments to encourage the students to aim high. You're a pleasure to teach because it feels like you have a clear sense of why you're here. We feel as teachers that we're feeding into something which is building and that's what makes it a pleasure to teach. I think you can do anything. So um, with that freedom, you just need to work hard to tune yourself. You know, the positivity in what was being said to you was very strong too. You must have been pretty pleased there. I was. Mm. You definitely have the beauty and the talent and the emotional richness. It's kind of funny that you sort of doubt what you've got when you've got all of that richness and complexity. The Irish have a great saying of throwing your hat over the wall. Matt's getting a lesson from Tom McCrory about the realities of the industry. Because when you throw your hat over the wall, it means you're going to go over the wall. You've made a commitment, you you've got to throw it. your hat over the wall. Hey, yeah. who's your hero at acting? It's Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Yeah. But this is a deeply competitive industry. And, you know, Johnny Depp made his first movie at 19, but he didn't just fall out of the sky and go, ooh, I'm a genius. You can bet that kid was dreaming from an early age. You can bet that kid was working and, and tuning and honing and setting his sights from an early age. Look, I mean, and there's plenty of New Zealand examples of that. I've heard Cliff Curtis was a very highly ambitious guy when he came to this school. I don't see you looking in my eyes like, you know, you're playing at that level. I don't see you attack the working class at that level of hunger. Mm. Would you say that's a fair comment? That's a fair call. It was just like, in a way, like re reiterating what I already sort of knew, but I just, yeah, it was good. The assessments are giving them all food for thought. Colleen thought she'd made the right decision to pursue an acting career, but now she's struggling with what she really wants. I'm really nervous about this idea of this not being the right place for me. Like, I'm kind of falling apart over that at the moment. Just not handling it as well as I was on Monday. This idea is kind of scary at the moment. It's a kind of big thing to sort of manage because I've been waiting for so long to be here and like preparing. I feel like a bit preparing myself for the last three or four years to come here and just the idea that that was all wrong. It's just kind of scary at the moment that the thing that I thought I would be good at wasn't the right thing. Let's be specific so that we can, you know, maybe shift this. Think about uh, that scene that you had with Natano. What do you want to do with the baby? Keep it. With you. I'm going. <laughs> I thought I hey. thought with that scene that um that at one point in it I I really I really did abandon myself to just being really and really in it. It just took took me somewhere. You did some very good work. I thought your responses were truthful. I, when I went home, I was kind of like, well, did anyone see that or not? From my point of view, I think I'm, I'm interested in just checking that this is still the path you want to walk on. If it is, keep walking it. If it isn't, no shame in abandoning it. But I don't really know anything else that gives me joy. I have no idea what to think. <laughs> I'm fancy. Whether I should be here or somewhere else doing something else. Or if I'm even right to be upset. <laughs>
not at all. The feedback that you see seems really confronting. But once again, that's what they came here to hear. They paid their money and came to Toifikari in order that somebody would have the balls to tell them the truth about um, themselves and their work. The assessments have proved revealing, and for some, devastating. But if they're going to make it in the real world, they'll need to act on what they've learned about themselves. Whoa. <laughs> um, it was really good. I liked how they talked to me. This is the first time I've ever sat down and, and um, assessed my, myself. I thought it was going to be this big terrifying experience where we were going to get the like from high school days, but it was good, really good. I thought they'd be a lot worse than they were, and I thought they'd be a lot tougher than they were. I was actually really pleased to, to get feedback that, that I could use, because I, I, do, I do want to move on and get better. Definitely is kind of put things in perspective about what I need to do. I can go home now and I might have a few beers and just relax for a while, because the uh, last few days have been a bit sort of treacherous. Next week, it's all getting very personal. As the students get to grips with each other, they're losing their grip on themselves. You don't care. And for some, things have reached breaking point. I've never done anything to hurt you. If I don't, tell me why you. I don't want to hear 